Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Kaufman, a retired family doctor and a CLL patient myself and the executive vice president, chief medical officer, and the co-founder of the nonprofit CLL Society. Dr. Leslie, can you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Lori Leslie. I'm a lymphoma and CLL specialist at the John Thurrock Cancer Center in Hackensack, New Jersey. And Dr. Leslie, um, you and I have been privileged to see how the landscape for treating CLL has radically shifted in the last decade and how that's significantly improved outcomes for patients. But CLL is not a solved problem and you're involved in a trial that's looking at some new agents and tell us a little bit about that trial and why there needs to be ongoing research in CLL. Absolutely. So it's been a really exciting decade in the management of CLL, and, and we've really moved away from chemotherapy towards targeted agents. Um, there's really two main classes of targeted agents we use. One are called Brut and Tyrosine kinase inhibitors, and there are several different drugs in that class, including abrutinib, acalabrutinib, and xanabrutinib that all block that protein a similar way. And then there's another group of uh, drugs that we use that inhibit a different protein called BCL2. And the one approved so far is called Venetoclax. So as the director of the CLL program at Hackensack, it's been a challenging time to try to figure out, you know, how to use these drugs, sequence these drugs, starting with patients who have never been treated before for, for CLL. So right now, one of the drugs that's in development that I guess we'll focus on for the moment is called Sonrotoclax. And it is a newer version or a different version of venetoclax in that they both target this survival protein called BCL2. And a CLL cell lives about 120 days, where a normal white blood cell lives only 10 days. And the reason they live so long is because they make too much of this BCL2 survival protein. So what these drugs, venetoclax and sonrotoclax do is they turn off that survival signal. And that's how they target what's driving CLL. So Sonrotoclax um, isn't yet FDA approved. It's been clinical studies and it's, we've been participating in clinical studies at Hackensack for some time that started with the initial development. And now we're opening a study um, called 301. It's BGB11417, which in case anyone wants to look it up, I'll include that. Um, yeah, we'll include a link to the, um, the, the trial on clinicaltrials.gov so people will okay, know. Okay, great, great. And so what this is, is it's looking at the newer version or this version of um, Sonrotoclax BCL2 inhibitor by itself um, in the past in combination with Xanabrutinib and in a triplet, these have all been investigated. So what this is looking at is using Sonrotoclax in combination with the BCK inhibitor Xanabrutinib as the experimental arm compared to a current frontline standard of care option, which is venetoclax with a immune therapy, a CD20 antibody called abinutuzumab. And it's a randomized head-to-head -head study. And just to be clear on some of this, obinutuzumab, some people may know that as Gaziva um, because um, it's a mouthful of obinutuzumab. And I just wanna point out, this is not a weak comparator. Like in the past, trials have um, looked had tried to set up a comparator arm that they were sure that they were going to defeat with their new drug. But venetoclax and obituzumab is a very excellent option for patients with very strong results for people. So this is this is going to be a, a, a quite a meaningful trial and it's sort of a gutsy trial too, I would say. Absolutely. And the hypothesis is that sonrotoclax with uh, xanabrutinib may be superior to our current standard of care. Um, I think it's a great design because, as you mentioned, the, the standard of care comparator arm is not chemotherapy. It's not even you know, some of our first generation treatments, such as a brutinin. And you're also comparing two similar experiences for the patients. So in the sonrotoclax with xanabrutinib arm, it's time limited, just as our venetoclax with abinutuzumab or Fiziva arm, which is also a time limited about one year of treatment in the frontline setting for patients um, that we use currently.
Well, so it seems a really good trial. I would suspect um, that this the trial is going to take a while to get some answers because both have, you know, or at least we know that the venetoclax and obinutuzumab arm, those patients do extremely well. We know patients on just xanabutinib on itself does really well. So adding another agent with the hope would be they do even better. So I imagine this is going to be a while till to, to we get any results from this trial. Is that a fair assessment? Absolutely. You know, it's a randomized study. So they're including almost 650 participants. It's international. So many sites will be participating. Um, some data came out at ASH this year from a prior multi-part study, um, and they presented some information on the sonorotoplax venetoclax combination uh, cohort, and response rates really high, um, actually about 100% with you know very short follow-up. No one yet has progressed, and um, there's very high rates of undetectable minimal residual disease or patients who really are at a deep, deep, deep level of remission as early as 24 months. And the comparator arm, our venetoclax with a benetuzumab, we have many years of follow-up from that initial CLL-14, highlighting just what you've said, deep, uh, deep rates of remission, a very deep remission, high rates of deep remission, um, and very durable responses. So with CLL, of course, we have to wait a long time for some of these data to mature. But as with many other studies, some kind of surrogate endpoints for response, like achieving early undetectable minimal residual disease that's undetectable. So that really, really deep cellular level of remission are being included as a secondary endpoints to help try to get a signal maybe earlier than that standard kind of progression signal we might be looking for in a randomized study. What kind of patient would you recommend consider this trial? What, what are the admission uh, criteria and exclusion criteria for this? So it is a very inclusive study. It's really all comers with untreated CLL. Um, patients have to be in a rel relatively good performance status, meaning kind of able to take care of themselves in general to participate um, in clinical studies. Patients can absolutely have comorbidities or other medical issues as long as they're well controlled. Um, there's not a specific age criteria as long as someone is fit to get either of those treatments, they would be appropriate to participate. There are a few exclusion criteria really common across CLL. So people who have Richter's transformation um, will not be included in this study, though there's many other studies, including these types of agents you know, for Richter transformation um, and people who have involvement of their central nervous system is also another you know, exclusion criteria, but that's really not something that very commonly happens in CLL in general. Yeah, thank goodness. Yes, yeah. So very exciting. Um, if people want to find out more about this, um, how can they find out more? And uh, uh, if, if they're interested in this trial, is it open yet in the U.S.? There are a few sites that are open in the United States. Um, pretty soon we will be opening at Hackensack. We're in kind of the final phases of that. Uh, clinicaltrials.gov is great, great resource. You can see as, as centers are opening. Um, and I think uh, it's really an encouraging time for our patients. Any final thoughts about this trial or these, I, I, I don't even know if you can call them novel, these, these next generation or, um, of um, targeted therapies that we have. Any final thoughts you want to share with patients? We're in a great era of CLL, again, where we've really stopped using things like chemotherapy, and there's many good options. So it's just important to talk with your provider, not only about the single option they may be specifically recommending, but why they would recommend that for you compared to all the other things that are available. And if you're considering a clinical trial, but for whatever reason, it doesn't work out, you know, don't lose hope. There's many other, you know, appropriate options. Um, so I don't want anyone to feel like this is the, the best treatment. Everyone needs to be on it. It's just one more great tool to kind of add to our toolbox that's available for patients. And let me just add that I think everyone should consider clinical trials at every stage. Clinical trials aren't necessarily a Hail Mary pass when you've run out of options. 
but my own experience has shown that you know entering a clinical trial early on can really make a difference um and and, and especially one when both arms are really uh, look like they're going to be very strong so i encourage people i think you get excellent care often i should have asked you this or, do you know if the medications are paid for in the trial i imagine they are but so yeah, typically, be... particularly, yeah, typically, um, definitely the what's considered the experimental arm um, typically is covered. Many times, the uh, standard of care arm may or may not be through regular insurance. Though, um, typically, as this is standard of care and a very, very excellent option, um, all of that would be worked out with both the research and the regular financial team to make sure people can get access to their treatment affordably. Yeah, I think you get the best care in a clinical trial. They watch you. Sometimes it can be annoying how much they watch you. I'd warn you that you do get more uh, scanning and more blood tests and more bone marrow biopsies, but it's yeah. worth it because you get- A whole extra layer, a whole extra team in addition to the regular team following you. And I think this, you know, I'm really happy you're highlighting this study because it shows exactly what you're saying, clinical trial participation from even people who have never been treated before is is a great choice for for patients yeah and it in it not only are you helping yourself but you're helping other people because they're learning from that data well dr leslie great to talk with you great to hear about this trial thanks so much for what you and your team are doing thanks for thanks for chatting and thanks for all you do for our patients and ocl society is a wonderful resource for education access to trials information so we really appreciate all you do well thank you so much thank you